In the button tutorial, we learned how to write a Netduino app, which lets us control the LED on our Netduino by pushing the button. When we push the button and release the button, it turns the LED on and off. Now we did this in a loop, where we read the state of the button, and then we wrote that state to the LED. This works very well for simple applications, but sometimes we need to create something more sophisticated. We're going to introduce a new concept called Event Handlers and we're going to recreate the same app using event handlers. This is an advanced tutorial. Let's get started. Go to the Start button, click on Programs, Visual Studio 2010 Express, and start Visual C Sharp 2010 Express. We'll create a new project, so click on New Project. As always, it's a Visual C Sharp Micro Framework project and a Netduino app. We'll call this Advanced Button App. Press OK to create the project. Now on the right side, double click on program.cs, that will open up our code, and we'll start writing our code here. Now first, we're going to want to create a variable for our button. That will be an interrupt port. And what this will allow us to do is to know when the button is pushed via an event handler. This interrupt port we're going to name button, and we're going to make it a new interrupt port. We're going to assign a pin of pins dot onboard switch one and the next two values will set to their defaults. The glitch filter will turn off, that's advanced, we can learn more about that later. And the resistor mode, we don't want to enable the pull up resistor that's built into the microcontroller, so we'll just set this to disabled. Now this third value is a new one. This is interrupt mode. And the interrupt mode allows us to capture either when the button is pushed or when it's released or both. We'll capture both states or edges here. So we're going to capture the interrupt edge both. The next line is a line where we're going to wire up our event handler and we're going to create it all in one step. This is a really nice feature of Visual Studio. We'll type button dot and then down here we have the on interrupt event. We'll hit space and we'll fill that in and we'll type plus equals. This adds a new event handler to the button. Now here it says press tab to insert. We can simply press tab twice and not only does it finish our code to wire up this event handler, but it also creates the event handler down here. Now we have a button and whenever that button is pushed we're going to get an event, but we still need the LED. Well if we create the LED here we won't be able to turn it on and off here because they're in separate routines. So we're going to create the LED within the program class so both of these two routines can access it. We'll create it up here. We'll type output port as usual, LED equals new output port. We'll assign pins dot onboard LED and we'll start it off in a false position. Now these two routines still won't be able to access it because we're missing one little thing. We can go into this more later but we need to add the word static before output port. What that means is that everything within this program class that's marked static, such as the main routine and the static void button on interrupt routine, are going to be able to read and write to this LED. Now down in our interrupt, we want to respond to the push button being pushed. Whenever it's pushed, this routine will be called. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to turn the LED on or off. So let's type LED.write. Now wait a minute where do we get the value of the push button? Well this is a generic event handler and it's generic so that it's very easy to do on a microcontroller. In a desktop environment you would get really particular values. Here we get two generic values data1 and data2 and then a timestamp to let us know when this event happened. Well data1 is the number of the pin of our actual onboard switch. We can disregard that for now because we only have one thing calling this routine the pushing and releasing of the button. Data2 is going to contain a value saying whether that button was pushed or released. Now here after write, we could type data2, but that's not going to work because this is not a boolean value. It's a number, and LED write is, except, is expecting a boolean. So what we need to do is create an expression that evaluates to either true or false. Now data2, if it's zero, is going to mean that the button is pushed. 
So let's write data2 equals equals zero. That means that if data2 is zero or pushed, then the LED will go on. If data2 is not zero, meaning is not pushed, the LED will not go on. That's it. But there's one more thing we need to add. Right here, after our main routine runs, our Netduino app is done running. Well, if we went ahead and wired up this event handler and then stopped running the program because we ran out of instructions to run, the push button would not do anything. What we need to do is have the microcontroller go into a sleep mode and just wait around for events. So we're going to type thread.sleep and then we're going to tell it to wait infinitely, forever. That's it. Now let's go ahead and tell the project that we wanted to use our Netduino instead of the emulator. So go to the project menu and go to advanced button app properties. Click on the .NET microframework tab. Select USB as a transport. Your Netduino will appear here and then close this tab. Let's run our app. Go ahead and press the play button, also known as start debugging, or press F5. Visual Studio deploys this application to our device, restarts the device, and here we go. Now let's push the button. Push the button and the LED turns on. Release the button and the LED turns off. Push it again, the light comes on. Release it again, the light goes off. If you'd like, you can even tap out a message in Morse code. How about SOS? That's it. We've now created our first event handler. Inside of this code, you can do many more advanced things. Thanks for watching.